Hello, and welcome back to the second chapter in our Rigging for Beginners series. Thank you so much for the positive response to chapter one. And again, feel free to share, subscribe, and send us your feedback. Remember, folks, all boats differ in their design, features, and layout. Learning to sail should be done by enrolling in a recognized and certified sailing course. These videos could assist you in preparing for such a course. At the end of chapter one, we advise that when working with the mainsail, that we try to keep the boom swing to a minimum. Actually, at all times, we need to try to avoid unintentional boom movement as this could lead to injury, man overboard scenarios, and equipment damage. We also need control of the boom depending on which course we are sailing on, in relation to the wind. So the next rigging component that we can add is going to be the main sheet. The main sheet is a line which controls the angle of the boom and determines how much boom movement is permitted. This line will probably be fed through a block system which allows us easier control of the boom. This block system will allow us to set the main sheet and then lock the line. Here we will come across something called a cam cleat. Let's have a look at how a cam cleat works. This is what a cam cleat looks like. We use it to lock and unlock a line that has been passed through blocks. Please note for this video we have removed the cam cleat guide which assures that the line we are using stays close to the cleat. We've done this just so we can demonstrate better. It's quite a simple mechanism. The two sides are spring loaded so if we open them up the springs will close them to the original position. They also have ridges along the inside to grip lines. Now, as we pull a line through, the cleat opens up easily, but will grip and lock the line when tension is applied in the other direction. To unlock the line, we first pull the line towards us, then move the line from the cleat and release. We now have control over the main sheet which controls the boom. If we unlock the cleat and ease the line out, our boom can swing. If we sheet in and lock the line, we can bring the boom closer to the center of the vessel. Now we can set the boom where we want it and also avoid unintentional swing while we are concentrating on other tasks. To give us additional control of the boom, we can also expect our main sheet to be attached to a sliding traveler system, which we will cover in the future. Also note that this sliding traveler system could be found on the cabin roof. Yep, sorry folks, time to head to the classroom. We're going to be discussing the jib sail soon, but first let's go through some theory to help us understand some basics. What we're looking at here is a reading which shows where the wind is coming from in relation to our vessel. Take note of the two colors as this is universal. Green on our right as we are looking forward and red to the left. The green side on our right, looking forward, is known as our starboard side. The red side on our left, looking forward, is known as our port side. If the wind blows from the solid area from the front as shown now, we cannot get effective wind in our sails and we will not be able to sail. Once we get the wind at the correct angle, 
then we will be able to sail. Here the wind is blowing from our starboard side and we call this sailing on a starboard tack. With the correct angle of wind from our port side, we will be able to fill our sails and sail on a port tack. When we are sailing on a port tack, the port side is known as our windward side, that is, where the wind is coming from. The starboard side will be known as our leeward side, leeward side, the downwind side. As we turn through the wind, we will change course to a starboard tack. Windward side will now be starboard, and our port side will now be the leeward side. In the last video we discussed the mainsail. Now we can add a jib sail. A jib sail is a foresail and will be found attached to our forestay. They come in various forms and sizes with different names and uses. Most modern day cruisers will have a furled or rolled up jib sail on the forestay. We should be able to control the sail from the safety of our cockpit. This will allow us to work the sail without having to move around on deck which can get tricky in adverse conditions. The normal furling system will be a system attached to the forestay of our vessel, which, as discussed previously, runs from the top of our mast to the foredeck. To better understand this system, let's look at a simplified version. Here we have our forestay, which has our jib sail furled or wrapped around it. At the bottom of the sail we will find our furling drum, which allows us to furl or unfurl the sail. This system is controlled by three lines. The first will be our jib furling line, which will be attached to our furling drum. The next line will be our port line, which will run from the port side of the boat to be used when the jib sail is on our port side. And finally our starboard line which will run from the starboard side of the boat and used when our jib is on the starboard side. Both these colored lines perform the same function just from different sides of the vessel. The furling line is shown here in white and will run from the cockpit to the furling drum. As with many other lines, this line probably runs through a jammer and be controlled by a winch. The jammer works as all other jammers. When it's open, the line can move away from us and a closed jammer only allows movement towards us. On the port side we find the port jib sheet which controls the jib when it's on the port side. And on the starboard side we have the starboard jib sheet which controls the jib when it's on the starboard side. When we use the starboard line the port line has no function and when we use the port line the starboard line has no function. Take note, when the sail is rolled, the furling drum is empty. The unrolling of the sail will cause the drum to rotate and will coil the furling line around it. As we now winch this line, the sail unfurls, causing the furling line to coil around the furling drum. 
which colored line we use depends on which side of the vessel we want our jib sail. Again, this furling line can only move if the jammer is open. To fill the sail, we now pull on the furling line, which rotates the drum and rolls the sail up. To do this, we have to allow the jib sheet lines to move, so we will have to remove these lines from winches when furling the jib. As mentioned, the jib sheets are lines used to control our jib sail. When the wind blows from our port side and we are sailing on a port tack, the jib sail is sheeted in on the starboard side with a starboard jib sheet. Once we turn through the wind and sail on a starboard tack, we use the port jib sheet to sheet in the jib. This is an often forgotten jammer. Don't forget to open so we can use the sail. As we turn through the wind we have to be ready to change jib sheet lines from one side to the other. As we change tacks we release the line from the new windward side and sheet it in on the new leeward side. So that's it for this episode. Next time we look at reefing. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial and look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you. Bye bye.